thinking about it right now, I started working for Pema because I needed, I started working with Pema because I'm not like a staff member. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm an activist, so I work with Pema. Um, I started acting, <laughs> sorry, um, working with Pema to get, get closure. Because, you know, after coming out, I really didn't have any queer friends to relate to or anybody to advise me or hold my hands or guide me. But then um, along came Pema and I just felt safe, you know, because I thought that I was the only queer person out there that was going through challenges that wasn't understanding themselves or what going to happen with their lives next. And for me, it just started out as me seeking closure, me wanting to find friends, someone to talk to, someone to listen to. And then um, after becoming a member of Perma Kenya, it slowly grew to me being passionate about activism and me wanting to fight for the rights of others and ensuring that young people out there can be themselves um, freely and can at least accept themselves. Um, because I believe that acceptance starts from, from me, the individual. Like I have to accept myself first before anyone else accepts me. And therefore, um, I think that, I believe rather, that is what channeled me to become an activist. Because most of what I do, even through my writing, even through, um, my lyrics and every other project that I work on, it's usually about having people become comfortable with who they are, having people to accept themselves and not seek validation from other people. I've, um, I would say I'm lucky, I've gotten to this point whereby I do not even seek validation from other members of the gay community, as in, I am my own individual, I am my own person, and that is what I believe every other human being should be able to embrace their own personality, like be you and be unapologetic about who you are. Yeah. Um, in regards to that particular law, which talks about carnal knowledge and anything against the order of nature, which a lot of people would view it as, like the first thought that comes into people's mind is anal sex because it's a practice that is common, particularly amongst gay men, and people would use it against us. And I would like to bring into light, you know, just because it's not spoken about doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but I am aware that even heterosexuals practice anal sex. Even um, straight men enjoy, like, certain sexual practices, which might be deemed as unnatural. And, you know, so it comes down to that private space, that personal space. And also the same constitution um, gives each and everyone a right to privacy. And, you know, there's just a lot of things that people need to factor in when it comes to this law, other than just being hostile towards the gay community. I think if we had a lot of people um, aware and willing to support this and if a lot of people would view this as a human fight fight rather than gay people fighting for gay rights then i think we would be uh, progressing into a positive space not just for the gay community but for the entire community whereby instead of just tolerating each other we would end up accepting each other so um I would say that definitely the law needs to change. And there's also other laws um, that would need to be reviewed and to change. But let's, my um, appeal to everyone, to the community would be, these laws affect all of us in one way or another, not just someone that you know, but you, on a personal level, it does affect you. Personally, I am what people would deem as a millennial. So people <laughs> would, I wouldn't have a lot of knowledge about the sexual, um, the sexual knowledge before colonialism. But one thing that I am aware of from reading various forms of 
African literature and also exploring um, the internet is that there are records of same-sex practices before that happened. And not just in Kenya, but all through the African um, region. And a lot of people would actually say that homosexuality is something that came with, for instance, Kenya being a British colony that came with the British and they're trying to impose their uh, way of life to ours. But then it's something that existed and something that will continue to exist. And I believe that um, I would almost call it ignorance because people are ignorant of the fact that um, sexuality is fluid. Sexuality is something that cannot be boxed or contained. And people are trying to make sexuality be almost like, um, you know, um, Pepsi in a can, that this is how it should be, this is how it should taste, this is how it should look like. But I really tend to believe that sexuality in my own world <laughs> in my own words, would be an ocean in the sense that the ocean is beautiful because it, it has no shape, it has no limits, it is what it is, there's level to um, the water in the ocean. And people, in, in my understanding, are basically trying to contain it and use, you know, um, some would say it is an African, some would say it is not Christian, that sexuality is meant to be fluid and it cannot be contained. And it's something that people should stop fighting, other people should just embrace their own sexualities. Um, all respect to heterosexuals, um, but like I always say, just because you know, it has been accepted, doesn't mean that it is the only thing that is out there. Doesn't mean that heterosexual practices are normal, quote. Um, it means that it has been accepted by people. And hence the other sexualities, or sexual identities need to be accepted and I am hopeful, even after I am gone from this world, that, you know, we're going to get there. So, yeah. Acceptance. And like I said earlier, for me, acceptance changes a lot of things. Changes how I view myself, changes how other people view me. And the most powerful weapon that we have, which people are not aware of, is accepting themselves for who they are. And there's certain things about us that we can change, and there's certain things about us that are plainly who we are. For instance, the other day I was in this platform, um, we were talking about religion, and I remember sharing with the crowd that I have nothing, as, in, as, as far as my sexuality is concerned, my sexuality is not something that I need to ask God to change, because God created me as you see me, and I'm okay with who I am. So a lot of people, particularly in this community, need to get to that space whereby they accept themselves. And that would be a very powerful start. And by acceptance, I mean, I don't mean like rabbit on people's faces that, you know, I am gay, I'm flamboyant, I'm A, B, C, D. Just be who you are, embrace who you are, be happy about who you are, go on that journey. Um, there's always someone to listen to you. There's always someone to help you. If they aren't out there, hey, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Skype or whatever, and I will listen. But it's very, very important to get into that point whereby the LGBT themselves have accepted who they are. After that, I believe then it would really empower all the efforts all around the world for LGBT rights to be considered as human rights.